So how can you stop waking up in the middle of the night? You've probably had this experience, right? And by the way, don't get distracted because getting distracted and clicking on other videos is exactly what's gonna make you not be able to do this. So just give me a few minutes, just give me like two or three minutes of your time and I promise you I will explain with no catches, no distractions, how to stop waking up in the middle of the night, how to kind of beat insomnia and sleep all the way through your night. So if you didn't already know, I you know run this channel and talk about sleep and dreams quite a lot. Um, but what you might not know is that I have actually spent a lot of money and a lot of time on improving my sleep. I track my sleep, I've used various sleep trackers, I now use a ring, the Aura, Aura ring, and uh, I've had a couple of sleep coaches, I've gone through all kinds of training and programs to improve the quality of my sleep and to make sure that I sleep the whole night through without waking up in the middle and that I consistently wake up at the right time, 6.30 in the morning, and go to bed between 10 and 10.30, and that I have enough or even more than enough deep and REM sleep, which is very important for recovery, for energy, and uh, really anything you're trying to do. So what is the secret? There's a few things I want to explain here. I'm going to try and keep it as brief and effective as possible. I'm, not, I'm try, going to try not to waste your time. As a, as a kind of thank you for doing that, please leave a like, scroll down, leave a comment saying something nice or, or not something nice. I don't really mind. <laughs> so what is the first thing? The most important thing you need to realize is that sleep is cyclical. Of course it is, right? We're not nocturnal creatures. The sun goes down, we're supposed to be asleep. We're supposed to be in bed. We're supposed to stop moving, stop digesting, and stop thinking. So really anything that interferes with that is gonna interfere with your sleep. So what, what do we need to do about that? So two to three hours before you go to bed, and ideally that should be two, roughly two hours after the sun has gone down. So two hours after it gets dark, you go to sleep. So just as it's starting to get dark, you turn off all your screens, or you turn down your lights at least, make sure you get some kind of soft lighting, like I've got a soft light here behind the screen so I can't actually see the light. This is a soft light. You could also get some candles, like you can see, uh, where is that? Here, I have a candle. Some kind of soft lights, okay? So in the evening, soft lights, as low as possible, no screens ideally, and you relax. That's your time to relax. So you can do things like reading, talking, bedroom activities, all kinds of stuff, right? But nothing, ideally no screens, if you can help it. The next thing involving light is to make sure that in the mornings, so when you first wake up, in that first half an hour to an hour of waking up, you get as much light as you possibly can. You open your curtains full, fully, you open your windows, you let the fresh air in, you move around, jump, you know, bounce up, and I literally have a, uh, let me show you here, a rebounder trampoline. So first thing in the morning, I jump on that. I get my blood flowing and uh, get my heart rate up and move around. Makes a huge difference because it spikes your cortisol. It, it tells your body that you're aligned with the natural cycles. The sun rises and you start moving. It's like anything in nature. Well, except nocturnal parts of nature. Another thing that you can do is if you look here, you'll see that I have a very bright little light thing. And uh, what that is, is it's a sun lamp. So if you live in a part of the world that doesn't get a lot of natural sunlight, for example, North, like Scandinavia, some parts of Europe, firstly, it causes depression. So if you, have, if you don't get enough sunlight, you literally get depressed. But secondly, it's very important to get enough sunlight. Most of us are deficient in light. And you don't realize it because our eyes can adapt so amazingly to pretty much any light conditions. So you can be literally inside all day but not getting enough light, and you wouldn't really notice it. Um, the only way you'd notice it is if you tracked your sleep and realized, hold on, I'm actually not getting good quality sleep. I'm not getting enough deep and REM. But the good news is this lamp costs about 20 bucks. So now, it doesn't matter what the weather's doing outside, it can be literally pitch black, and I can always get enough light, especially first thing. At least just for 15 minutes when you first wake up, you need to get that sunlight. Okay, so we've covered light, we've covered movement, kind of. Next, I wanna cover something called earthing or grounding. This is where you stand barefoot on soil, grass, sand, or in, in water. If you live near a beach, that's even better because you get the bacteria from the ocean. That's like the perfect situation. But at least walk around in the grass barefoot. If you have a garden with grass like I do, you can literally just combine this with your morning routine. So you go outside, sit down, my feet are on the grass, so I'm grounding, and I'm in nature, getting fresh air, getting sunlight. So it's like a com combination of three habits there. Okay, I'm gonna try and keep this, I'm starting to ramble now. So we've covered light, we've covered movement, grounding. And now when it gets to the evening, like I said, you should be not having any screens going for the two, two or three hours before you go to sleep. If you do have to watch screens, I, you know, I get it. It's easy, it's fun. 
at least use something called blue light blocking glasses, which is these funky kind of orange tinted glasses you can get, which block out the blue light. So at least it's not gonna suppress your melatonin production that much, much better than nothing. They're also very cheap. It's like four bucks on Amazon, check them out. And also if you have a bath, I mean, some people have just a walk-in shower or something, but if you have a bath, try and have a hot bath with magnesium flakes. Uh, again, very cheap on Amazon. Magnesium flakes dissolved into the bath. A hot bath, believe it or not, it actually helps to lower your body temperature, your core temperature. I thought it would be the opposite, but it actually lower, it helps to lower your body core temperature, which helps you to get deep sleep. Next thing to do with water, you've probably not thought about this. In the three hours leading up to bed, you should be drinking less and less water to the point where just before bed, all you should be having is like a very small sip of water. This is because one of the most common reasons for waking up is you need a toilet. So you can avoid that by just tapering off your water consumption in like the last three hours before you go to bed. Very simple, right? Very easy. And finally, my last tip to you is to meditate because by meditating, you massively reduce the chances of having a nightmare, overthinking and waking up because you're stressed about something. The I would say those are the most common reasons people wake up in the middle of the night is they're either, either overthinking or they're stressed or they have a nightmare. If you meditate, you drastically reduce the chances of any of those things happening. And it's free, right? Everyone loves free stuff. So that's basically it. You know, if you do those things, if you're doing all of those things, it's highly unlikely that you will experience insomnia and that you will wake up in the middle of the night. The chances are, if you're, <laughs> if you're waking up in the middle of the night, you're probably not doing one of those things or all of those things. Yeah, so that was fun, wasn't it? So check that out, try that out. I mean, if you wanna learn how to lucid dream, I have a big video about that. Check the link in my description. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you think. Scroll down and comment saying that you will try it or, or let me know why you won't try it, you know? And if you're still watching this or listening to this, then um, remember I have a podcast, just type into any platform like Spotify, just type in Luc how to lucid or lucid dreaming experience podcast. And if you're listening to this on the podcast, then this makes no sense to you. And yeah, I'd love to know what you think. By the way, check out my, this is just gonna be a bunch of call to actions now where you just, I just tell you to do things. <laughs> but if you're interested in it, um, I have another channel called Astral HQ, which is where I talk about spirituality and consciousness more. The deep stuff I can't really get into on this channel. So check that out. And uh, I have a Telegram group if you wanna chat to me, if you wanna, cause you know, with the comments, things get very easily overcrowded. It's hard to reply to everyone, but with the Telegram group, only the most interested people will be there. So I can hopefully reply to you more there. Just go, um, I think it might be in my dis in my description, but if not, just type into Telegram, uh, howtolucid.com and you should see it. All right, so that's it. See you next time.